Hey everyone, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel. Today is another Top 10 Tuesday. I'm sorry I missed last week. <laughs> I had some things going on last week. Very hectic, very busy time for us, uh, personal-wise. But anyways, I'm not talking about that. Today, I'm going to be talking about my Top 10 Favorite Childhood Books. And... Yeah, so y'all will get to know more about me. Um, yeah, so if you see Cat Harris flying, my cat, he just got done ru running around like a freaking bat out of hell. And yeah, so here's my stack of books. I got seven right here. The other three I don't have copies of, or well. One of them I do have copy, a copy of, but I'm not going to show it in this video because the author is just awful. So let me get that in that away. So my first childhood favorite, uh, it came out in 1997. I was in second grade. I was seven years old when this book came out. And I found it at a school book fair. And my dad was always buying me books from the school book fair. He would come and walk in the... Uh, book fair while I was in class and um, surprised me with a stack of books when I got home. So one of the books that I was wanting was this book and I'm not going to put the title and I'm not going to put the author because I know it's triggering to a lot of people now when it used to be such a beloved series and spread hope and was an escape. Now it's just a bad thought. It's like a bad taste in your mouth. But even though the author has said problem, problematic things, it's still a childhood favorite and it will always be like a staple in my from my childhood. Um, so the book is, <laughs> you probably guessed it, uh, it's about three kids at a magical school and they learn about witchcraft and wizardry. And it's a seven book series, and the author is a garbage person, because she has said some not nice things, but yeah, so that's number one on this list. Now that I think about it, I'm going to be showing you the books by grade order, because I can distinctly remember what grade I read these books in. So, this book series, the Little House on the Prairie series, I read this uh, religiously in third grade. My teacher, she had all of the books in her room and I would just pick one and read it and she allowed me to take it home and read it. And my dad, he, he always was for me reading. Every time I was in the living room reading the book, he was like, what you, re what you reading? Tell me about it. And he was like always enthusiastic about every, any book I was reading. And so I remember reading those, but I don't remember what they're about, sadly. And I used to read them over and over and over again. Um, I remember reading them, along with the Babysitter's Club, but that one wasn't a favorite because it was everybody else's favorite and I wanted to, like, be different. So, yeah, I'm going to be getting the series. Uh, I found a box set and I want my kids to read them. Uh... And I used to watch Little House on the Prairie with my grandma, which I didn't like the show, but I liked the books enough to put it in this video. So, Little House on the Prairie by Laurel Ingalls Wilder. That's a mouthful. This third one is, it was a very close tie between this series and Animorphs. I used to read Animorphs. I've read all of them in fifth grade. But I started reading this series in 4th grade. And I stuck with it all the way till 8th grade. And now my kids are reading it and they love it. And the movies are great. Which, no, the first one was good with Jack Black. The second one I had a problem with because it was different character, different actors. And that was just, no. But that is <laughs> Goosebumps by R.L. Stein. Uh, this one's my favorite right here. Say Cheese and Die. Uh... It's about an old camera. And if you don't know what Goosebumps is, then you need to fix yourself. <laughs> because this is... These are classics. Uh, Slappy. My kids love Slappy. Uh, 
like the one about the, the locker room and haunted house, any, all of them and any of them. So, yeah, I was kind of hoping these skeletons would have been in the movie, but and the camera, which it wasn't. So, yes, Goosebumps comes in at number three. Well, actually, no, I'm not uh, numbering these, but it's my it's start on my list. <laughs> Number four, I read all of these books in the series in fifth grade, along with Goosebumps. So, it is Animal Arc uh, by Ben M. Baglio. And this one, my youngest, Adeline, she's going to be reading this one soon. She's still a struggling reader. She hates reading. And she, if it's not for school, she will not read. I ask her, can you read this for me? And she, no, she is against it. But if it's for school, she does it. She's like, meh. she fights me. But yes, she's going to be reading this one soon. It's about cats. And they're all like animals. They're, uh, there's 32 books in the series and I got about 12 of them, I think. Uh, kittens in the kitchen, pony on the porch, puppies in the pantry. It's a play on words. Uh, goat in the garden, hedgehogs in the hall. It's like. Takes an animal and matches that le the letter of the animal to a place. And so, yes, I used to read these all the time. And uh, it's about a girl named Mandy. Uh, her parents are uh, animal vets. Veterinarians. They run an animal clinic. At number five is Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt. When I was in sixth grade, the movie came out. I had no idea that it was a book. And I fell in love with the movie. I would watch it over and over and over again. And it got to the point where if I went somewhere, I would play or think of that movie from beginning scene to end scene. Every piece of dialogue, every setting, every scene, cut screen, everything. I would think of it in order. And it helped me go by help time go by faster especially if I was in a boring place like uh going to uh the dealership to get my mom's tire changed that was a struggle yeah and when daytime tv was just not interesting so yes and I read this book in sixth grade I remember reading it after my state standardized test and really loving it um, it's different from the movie, but the funny thing is, I showed this movie to my husband, and now it's one of his favorite movies. I'm just now realizing that a lot of these books I read in 5th and 6th grade. So, here's another one from 5th grade. It is The Island by Gordon Corman, uh, book one shipwreck. I have book one and book two. I have never read book three. And I like his other series, Everest, where this group of kids climbs Mount Everest. And I don't have those, so I need to buy those. But, yes, this is about six kids, and the, they get shipwrecked on this island. And, yeah. And it's really great. Uh, I think my oldest has read this. I don't really, I don't remember what she said, if she liked it or not, but I really remember enjoying it. Uh, so, and I want more. I was always wanting more, uh, yeah, survival type stuff was my favorite thing to read. And also, in fifth grade, I also read The Diary of Anne Frank for the first time. Yeah, so. That was another one, but it was not a favorite because it's sad. The next series that I have on this list is one I've talked about many times and this is the series that I read in eighth grade. I would read the books over and over and over again and book reports I would write that I was reading this book and it got to the point where my teacher started noticing and she wrote a note on one of my book reports after she failed me. It was like read something else. I took it to my mom and she was like you need to read something else. These books there was 12 of them at the time, I think. And I was just reading notes because I had my first boyfriend in 8th grade. I had my first breakup in 8th grade. And my grandpa died in 8th grade. And 
yeah, so these books were the only thing just getting me through my days, and I was just, I was an emotional child, and I was a problematic child. These are the only things that I that had my attention. And so that is the Daughters of the Moon series by Lynn Ewing. There's 13 books now, and I need to buy the 13th book, and then I'll be finished. Uh, I'm showing the fifth one because <laughs> books one through four, they're so beat up and torn up and being held together by tape. That's how loved that this series is. And I have not read this series since 8th grade. Uh, every day. I could, I was getting to the point where I can read these in a day and then start back over. That's how beloved this series is. Uh, if I read it now, I'm hoping that I still like them. Which I'm planning on doing this year, just rereading this whole series. I may do that. So... If you want to see a vlog on that, let me know. And if you've read these books, <laughs> comment down below. It's about these four girls, five girls. I don't know how many girls there are now. I don't remember. It starts off with four girls and they have superpowers. And they're um, getting in contact with this woman who's like a spiritual lady. And she's connected to the goddess of the moon. And they become daughters of the moon. And... Yeah, he's like a demon bad boy, and I'm just like, yes. And so, his name is Stanton. So, yes. Uh, yeah, I just, I just really loved the series in 8th grade. It got me through a lot. It got me through 8th grade. And I hated middle school. Now, let's talk about high school. <laughs> oh, okay. So... This book series, it's well known. I've, I have reread it last year. And that's Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. Uh, this book got me my friend group that I still have to this day. Uh, all of the emo, punk, gothic kids were reading this book. And yeah, this book got me my close friends that I have today. And they were just... It was like an own little book club. The Goss and the Emo kids had a book club and this was it. Uh, yeah, so Twilight. I read this in two or three days. And then I got my, ooh, cat hair. And I got my mom. I wanted my mom to read it. And she was like, no, no, I'm not going to read it. And I was like, just read the first page. Okay, so she puts it down on the counter and she goes to the first page. And then the next thing I know, I hear this. And then 15 minutes later, she's done read like this much. And she's like, oh, I can't read no more. I'll read it later. And I was like, okay. To this day, I don't think she's ever read it. Um, but, yeah. So, even trapped in my mom. And so, yeah. Twilight. It's part of my childhood. Is it a great series? No. Not whatsoever. Uh, the movies just ruined it for me. Uh, the movie came out when I was a senior, and I it just broke me. I was like, that's not Edward. He's too ugly. That's not Bella. She's too plain, and that's not how Bella's supposed to look. But, yeah. I thought that, but it ended up backfiring on me because my oldest was born when I was a senior in high school and that became one of her, that was the only movie that would calm her down. If she was crying, I'd put her in the bouncer, put her in front of the TV, turn the movie on, she'd shut up. Why? <laughs> right, number nine, I read this in middle school, probably seventh grade. And uh, my cousin read it and we talked back and forth when my best friend read it at the time. And she would read it, and we just talked about it. It was another little book club. And that was The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants by Anne Brashears. I remember reading this in the second book and just wanting more. Especially Lena and Costas. I was, I, that was a ship. I just wanted more. I think if I would have known about fan fiction in this time frame, then that would have been some shit then that would have been some good time. I probably would have read that along with uh, Daughters of the Moon religiously. Uh, now that I think about it, why isn't Lena and Kostas one of my ships? Or uh, Bridget and Eric? I mean, 
those two couples right there, this was the only thing. Then the movie came out, and I was fine. I fell in love with Blake Lively. She's a great actress. Uh, Alexis Bledel. Started watching Gilmore Girls after that movie. Uh, let's see, American Ferreira. I watched uh, Ugly Betty. Uh, Amber Tamblin, I think her name is. I haven't watched anything else, but I know that she's married to... Uh, what's his name? The bald guy with the glasses. He plays Crane in Kung Fu Panda, and he's um, Ian in Alvin and Chipmunks. <laughs> what is his name? I'll put it right here. Uh, but yes, I this is another childhood favorite. And yes, my teens are my childhood, and I hated my childhood. And the last book is uh, Number of the Stars by Lois Lowry. It's about this girl. She's Jewish, and it's set during World War Two. And she has she wears a uh, Star of David necklace. And it's about this necklace. And that's all I remember. So it is a childhood favorite. I used to read it all the time. Uh, and once again, that's why it's on this list. Because I read it all the time. But I don't remember what it's about. Because I've read over 600, 700 books in my life. And I can't remember everything. So, yes. Uh, I don't own this one. Don't know why. I will on it and it'll probably be like briar rose or so far from the bamboo grove where my opinion changes i don't know that is it for this top 10 tuesday i hope you enjoyed if you did please give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and comment down below what are some of your childhood favorites uh is any of these books on your list have you read did you read any of these books as you when you were a kid and I'll see you in my next video, which will be my 2020 favorites.